Hey our geeks, welcome to another video. So in today's video, we will be talking about the inhibitors of the electron transport chain and also about the uncouplers of oxidative phosphorylation. I know it's been a long time after which I'm posting videos. Thank you for staying tuned and giving me all the recommendations for all topics that I need to cover. CSIR net is coming soon, so therefore, buckle up guys and start studying and let me know if you want me to upload any other topics apart from the ones i'm right now uploading so now without much further ado let's get right into this video now before i get into the video i want to show you one type of question that has been asked in CSIR, which is based on the inhibitors of the electron transport chain. So you can find this question in the CSIR past year's question papers. And this question can be solved based on the knowledge of these. So if you want to know how to solve these, stay tuned for the video. Now, you all know that the electron transport chain is made up of many complexes that are in the inner membrane of the mitochondria right now there are four complexes complex number one complex two complex three and complex four okay the function of these is basically to take the electrons from the reducing equivalents nadh2 and fadh2 and pump electrons into the yes pump electrons into the inner membrane space from the matrix right which will then be siphoned in again back into the matrix using the atp synthase complex now inhibition of any of the complexes would lead to the inhibition of conversion of the atp to atp okay so we will look at specific examples of the complex inhibitors so the complex one basically is also called as the nadh oxidoreductase or nadh dehydrogenase complex and as the name suggests its role is to convert nadh into nad plus and the electrons will then be passed on further to the complex three Okay, now the electrons are transferred via FMN and FES. Now here comes the first inhibitor, which is rotenone. Rotenone actually what it does is it inhibits the electron transfer from the FES, which is in the complex one to the ubiquinone. Okay, so this transfer of electron is inhibited. Therefore, it inhibits with the, it basically prevents the conversion of NADH to NAD. Okay, the complex one now is therefore unable to transfer its electrons and therefore there will be a backup of electrons in the matrix. Okay, so that is a way in which rotenone works. So it inhibits the electron transfer from the FES in complex one to ubiquinone. Similar mode of action is seen for Piperacidin A, which is an antibiotic extracted from the Streptomyces species. Its action is also similar to rotenone. Next are the barbiturates. So barbiturates block the NADH dehydrogenase and coenzyme Q. Okay. The examples of certain barbiturates are amytal and seconal. So if you see any of these names anywhere, these are all inhibitors of complex one. Okay, that is the NADH dehydrogenase complex. Next, coming on to complex two. Now, you all know that in the matrix goes on the Krebs cycle. And one of the steps of Krebs cycle is the conversion of succinate to fumarate. Okay, during this process, we know that FAD gets converted into FADH2. Now, the electrons of the FADH2 need to be passed on and that passage to the complex three is done via the complex two, okay? Complex two is also called as the succinate dehydrogenase complex, okay? This complex converts succinate to fumarate and produces FADH2, right? The FADH2 electrons are further transferred to coenzyme Q and then the process goes on, 
okay now let us look at the inhibitors of this complex so since succinate dehydrogenase is an enzyme the ideal substrate for this enzyme is succinate but because malonate has a similar structure to succinate it acts as an inhibitor so it basically competes with succinate for the active site so malonate is one of the competitive inhibitor of the complex 2 next is ttfa which is thionyl trifluoroacetone okay it binds to the quinone reduction site present in the complex 2 and therefore prevents ubiquinone from binding and if there's no binding of ubiquinone the electrons will not be able to pass then is carboxin which inhibits the transfer of electrons from fadh2 to coenzyme q so these are the three inhibitors of complex 2 next is antimycine Antimycine is an inhibitor of complex 3. Now, basically, what is complex 3? So, if you look at this picture, once the electrons have been transferred from complex 1 via the coenzyme Q, it will be taken up by cytochrome B. Cytochrome B then passes it on to cytochrome C1, and from C1, it goes to cytochrome C, which it then, you know, passes the electrons finally to oxygen. So, let us see which are the inhibitors of the complex 3. So the inhibitor of complex 3 is the antibiotic produced by the streptomyces species, antimycin. So what does antimycin actually do? It blocks the electron flow between cytochrome B and C1. And if this does not happen, there will be no transfer of electron, therefore no pumping of protons to the membrane and subsequently no generation of ATP. Okay, moving on to inhibitors of complex 4. So the complex 4 comprises of cytochrome A and cytochrome A3. So the electrons are taken up from cytochrome C and finally given to the last electron acceptor oxygen, which takes that electron and forms H2 with the pumping of 2H plus in the space, right? Now, what are the inhibitors of complex 4? Again, let me remind you the name of the complex 4 is cytochrome C oxidase complex, okay? And the inhibitors are cyanides. So basically, cyanides bind tightly to the cytochrome oxidase, thereby not allowing it to function. Then is hydrogen sulfide. Again, it inhibits cytochrome oxidase. Followed by then carbon monoxide. Now, carbon monoxide blocks cytochrome oxidase and oxygen by inhibiting the Fe2 plus form of the carrier, okay? Then you have azide. Azide blocks the flow of electrons between the cytochrome oxidase and oxygen. Again, similar mode of action to carbon monoxide. However, carbon monoxide used to bind to the Fe2 plus part of the oxidation state of the carrier, whereas azide binds to the fe3 plus oxidation state okay i hope you all know what cytochromes are if you all don't know what it is please google or if you want me to let you know please tell me i'll make a video on it okay next is the inhibitors of the oxidative phosphorylation now we all know that the electrons ultimately would reach to the complex four from the complex one and during that time number of h plus ions are pumped from the matrix into the intermembrane space, right? Now, since the mitochondrial membrane is impermeable to those H pluses that are accumulated outside, they have to come inside back. They need a special gateway. And that gateway is this structure that we can see, which is the ATP synthase complex. Now, oligomycin is an inhibitor of this complex. If we zoom into the structure, the structure has two major parts. First is called as the F0 domain and the other one is the F1 domain. Now it gets its name F0 because this part of the structure is inhibited by 0 or rather O, which is oligomycin. So what oligomycin does is it binds to the F0 domain and closes the proton channel. So if the proton channel is closed, 
the H plus ions cannot enter into the matrix. And if they do not enter into the matrix, this thing is not going to spin. And if it is not going to spin, there is not going to be any conversion of ADP to ATP. So basically, although all electrons have been transferred from complex one to four, elect protons have been pumped, still there will be no conversion of ADP to ATP because oligomycin has blocked the re-entry of the protons into the matrix. Okay, now due to this, the created proton motive force and electric gradient is dissipated and the ETC stops because after a point, no more protons are being able to enter in. Other examples that work like this are rutamycin and the other compounds listed over here. Okay, major one of this category is definitely oligomycin. Next, I want to introduce you to something called as uncouplers. So what are uncouplers? These are substances that uncouple phosphorylation of ADP from electron transfer. So once electrons have been transferred, the protons will be pumped. Now to make this cycle complete, the protons that have been pumped outside have to re-enter in. And this is where we say that, you know, there is a coupling. Electrons go, you know, pass and ATP is created. What uncouplers do is they don't affect the transfer of electrons. Rather, they affect the production of ATP. So these are compounds that uncouple the phosphorylation of ADP from electron transfer. Okay, both the electron transfer and ATP synthase have to work together for ATP production. But what uncouplers do is they separate the two. Okay, so these are compounds that dissociate synthesis of ATP from transport of electron through cytochromes. Examples are DNP, that is dinitrophenol and dicomaryl and CCCP. Okay. Let's look at 2,4-dinitrophenol, a very important compound in the, the uncouplers category. So 2,4-DNP is a proton ionophore. What it does is it basically shuttles protons across the biological membrane. Now, if it provides a pathway for the H plus to go, the H plus will not enter the ATP synthase and there will be no production of ATP. So basically, it functions by dissipating the proton gradient across a mitochondrial membrane. Okay, It collapses the proton motive force that is generated because of the electron transfer. So now, if the H plus are not going to the ATP synthase, rather an alternative route, there is no production of ATP and therefore, there is, you know, the whole process is wasteful. So instead of ATP being made, rather all the energy is dissipated as heat. Okay. Next is dicomeryl, which is a vitamin K analog. CCCP, full form is chlorocarbonyl cyanide, phenyl hydrozone. Okay. This is another example of an uncoupler. Other physiological uncoupler, uncouplers include thyroxine hormone, long chain fatty acids in adipose tissues. So these are all our examples of inhibitors and uncouplers. If you want to see how these questions are solved, stay tuned for my next video. That's it for me for this month. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.